all and happy new year. For this first video of 2023, I'm sharing my arm workout routine. That may seem a little strange because we're all still in our jackets and sweaters and long sleeve shirts, but my thought was, first of all, when January 1st rolls around, many of us are looking for a new fitness routine and a new regimen to try and get ourselves back on track, get ourselves in shape. And if we do it now, we're going to be ready come spring and summer when we are wearing our sleeveless and short sleeve shirts. Now, I did share my arm workout routine about four, four and a half years ago, and you'll find a few differences in this video, a few exercises that I've changed up. But the one thing that has remained constant is the fact that I only do this arm workout once a week. And if you saw those clips at the beginning of this video, those are the arms that I achieve with a once a week workout. So if I have your attention and your interest, I hope that you will stay tuned. In a moment, I'm gonna take you along with me to the gym. I'm gonna talk you through each exercise that I do, and then stay tuned to the end because I'll share what I do the rest of the week for fitness, etc. Now, as with all of these types of videos, I'm going to share the generalized disclaimer. I am not a physical trainer. I am not a physician. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a professional fitness instructor. This is just a routine and tips that have worked well for me. As always, it's advisable that before you start any new fitness routine, you check with your doctor and make sure it's suitable for you. Now, with all of that being said, let's get started and head off to the gym. The first thing is really important to have a little bit of fuel in my body to draw from as I work out. So I like to eat a banana with about a tablespoon of peanut butter or alternatively, just a scoop full of peanut butter with a little bit of honey. Once I get to the gym, I put on weightlifting gloves. These just help protect the hands as I am lifting weights. And now I go through just some simple stretches to help stretch out my neck and my arms and my shoulders. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to explain more about what you're about to see. So my weekly routine includes exercises for chest, triceps, biceps, and shoulders. And I complete all of the exercises for each muscle group before moving on to the next one. However, I change up the order of the muscle groups that I work from week to week. So this week we're starting off with my chest exercises. Next week will be tricep, the following week bicep, shoulders. And by doing this, it continues to keep the muscles at work and they don't get used to this routine. Even though I am not increasing the weight I'm lifting from week to week, I am sore every week and I've been doing this routine for years. So starting off, we are working chest exercises and I only do two different exercises in this muscle group. I'm starting off here with flat bench press. I used to use a barbell, but this particular gym does not have a barbell, so I'm using dumbbells, and I have two 20-pound weight dumbbells, and you can see I am doing slow, controlled movements here. I'm pressing up through the chest and then bringing the dumbbells together in the center. My back is flat on the bench, and I'm pressing my lower back into the bench, and then you can see I have my legs raised up my feet up on the bench. This just helps me personally not strain my back and it keeps the focus on lifting the weights. So I just finished 10 reps and now I am going to rest for just 20 seconds. I'm cutting out the rest time in this video so you don't get bored watching me just sit there. But I am not going to fast forward each set because I think it's important to see the timing and how slow and controlled I lift the weights because to me that is the next main key, not only switching up the routine each week in the order that you're doing the exercises, but it's also very important to keep each exercise slow and controlled. You don't want to sleep on the bench there going so slow, but you want to continue to keep that motion even going down and up because you are working muscles, different muscles as you go down with the weights and as you go back up. 
So just completed set number two. I have one more set, so I do a total of three sets of 10 reps. And by the end of the third set, these weights are getting really heavy, and sometimes I struggle to get that last rep up, especially if the chest exercises are not the first exercises I'm doing. If I have done triceps first and then chest exercises, sometimes I'm only able to complete eight reps in that final set. But that should help give you a gauge if you're trying to figure out how much weight you should be lifting in each muscle group. Start small, but you wanna make sure the weight is heavy enough to where your muscle group is pretty fatigued by the end of your third set of reps. So finished, whew, ready for a little rest, but during my rest time, I'm moving now to the next machine. So in this gym, I use this chest press machine as kind of an alternative to incline bench. You can do incline with barbell or dumbbells if you wish, but I'm just doing 20 pounds here and I am doing, again, slow and controlled. I make sure that the weights do not fully set all the way down, and I think that continues to keep a little bit of tension on the chest muscles throughout the entire time I'm working here on this machine. So again, I do three sets of 10 reps, and I rest for 20 seconds in between. For me, I believe that is one of the biggest keys of success with this type of training is you have less rest between, so it keeps your heart rate elevated slightly. It's not quite as high as it would be if you're running on the treadmill, but by doing lower weights, higher reps, and less rest in between, it does keep my heart rate elevated. So I feel like I am burning some calories and fat while I am at the same time building muscle. So finishing set number two, my last rest, and then I will start with my third set. And again, as I mentioned before, you can alternatively do incline bench with dumbbells. I will occasionally do that just to switch things up. And when I do that, I will use uh, 15 pound dumbbells in order to do the incline bench. I don't do that real often because sometimes I feel like that strains my neck a little bit more, but the chest press or if you have a cable machine, that's another great alternative for this particular exercise. Now that the chest exercises are done, it's time for triceps and I am going over to do some pull downs. You can use the rope, you can use the flat bar, or you can use this angled handlebars. I will show you each one of these, but I'm gonna start off with the angled bar. I feel like this is the middle ground. It's not the hardest, but it's not the easiest. So as you can see, I am only raising my hands to where my forearms are parallel with the ground and then pushing down. This keeps the concentration on just the triceps. If you go all the way up and all the way down, it uses some of your shoulder muscles and your biceps to pull down until you get to that waist point. Now I've switched to the rope here and the rope in my opinion is the hardest. When you're doing this, you do have to make sure you keep your face away from that cable, but you wanna keep your back straight and pull down again, concentrating on those tricep muscles. And each one of these variances does challenge different parts of your tricep, but this in particular, you can see it works the entire back of the arm. Again, we're resting for 20 seconds in between each one. To finish, I am going to use the flat bar here, which in my opinion is the easiest of the three. So if you're just starting out, this might be the place to start. Again, you wanna keep your face clear of that cable and the back straight. But again, I am not raising past basically my waist so my forearms stay parallel and that keeps the concentration on those tricep muscles. And I should mention the weight I am using here is 22.5. I'm not sure if that's pounds or what, but that's what's on the machine. You just, again, wanna make sure that by the end of that third set, 
you are feeling fatigued. So next exercise for triceps, this is probably the hardest. These are commonly known as 21s because you do three different exercises, seven reps of each for one complete set. I, however, do eight reps of each, so I call these 24s. And today, because I started off with chest exercises, I am reversing the order of the traditional tricep exercise here. So I started off with the close grip dumbbell bench press. Now I am doing what's called skull crushers because if you drop those dumbbells on your skull, they're gonna crush them, so you wanna be careful. And then the last exercise in the grouping is these are called pullovers and this is where you just want to make sure that your arms can actually reach past your head and those dumbbells are not touching the bench so that was kind of what i was doing at the beginning making sure i was properly situated on the bench and these pullovers the bench press and the skull crushers each one of those exercises focuses again on a different part of the tricep. And after that first set, I definitely need water. And you do want to make sure that you are continually drinking water throughout your exercise, throughout your weightlifting. But again, you wanna make sure you're not resting for more than 20 seconds between sets. So here I am back for set number two and again doing those push up bench presses so you can see i'm holding these two 10 pound dumbbells together pressing up and now i am doing the skull crushers now here to make it more difficult you want to keep your elbows pointing closer in towards your knees the further your elbows are out, the slightly easier it is. So to further challenge yourself, bring those elbows in. And again, I'm doing three sets of eight. So eight reps with each one of these exercises. And these pullovers, by doing these last, this is really hard. So when I do triceps as my focus group, I start with the pullovers, then do the skull crusher, then the push-up bench press. So finishing set number two, I'm gonna rest for 20 seconds. And trust me, you are gonna be tempted to want to rest longer, but you need to push through. So again, I'm showing you a different angle here, and I wanna reiterate the position I am in on the bench. Pressing the lower back into the bench is really important. Keeping my feet up, it again helps me not strain my back, especially when we get to the pullovers. The tendency can be to arch the back and you wanna make sure that you're not doing that. This also helps really keep that focus on those tricep muscles and the temptation can be again to allow your shoulders to do more of the work or your biceps and keep the focus, keep your mind focused on those tricep muscles and you'll be amazed at how much harder they do work when you're concentrating on the muscle group that is supposed to be doing the work. So by the end of this third set, my triceps are burning like crazy, but we still have one more exercise for triceps. And I have switched to two five pound dumbbells for this exercise, and I feel like these are kind of a modified kickback. I have my arms at my sides, I'm leaning forward just slightly, and I'm doing just a very small movement moving those dumbbells forward to the front part of my thigh and then back. And as I go back, I am angling the dumbbells towards the center of my back. I'm not touching the dumbbells, but it's almost like I'm trying to. And for this particular exercise, I only do two sets of 20 reps unless triceps are my focus group. So next week I will actually do three sets of 20. But this week I'm just doing two sets. I'm gonna rest for 20 seconds. I am actually going to stretch out my triceps just a little bit during that rest time. And then I will start in with the second set. So again, I do these two sets of 20 reps and by doing this small movement, instead of kneeling on a bench and doing full kickbacks, I feel like this also keeps 
less strain on the neck. I was having trouble with my neck getting so tight from full kickbacks, but also this focuses on that area that most of us women struggle with right above that elbow. We like to get little pillows there. And I feel like since I've been doing this, it's really made an improvement on that area because that is the primary muscle group that is worked when you're doing just these small little movements back. Once that is done, we are finished with our triceps and now it's time to move on to biceps and shoulders. Now I have gone back to two 10 pound dumbbell weights and now I am doing a compilation of four different exercises, 10 reps each. So this first set that I am doing, I am doing the bicep curls with an alternating twist. So as I pull up, I am twisting the dumbbell fully and then back down. You can see alternating means I'm doing just one arm at a time. It's really important when you're doing bicep work to not swing your upper body. And so I'm really trying hard to keep my upper body still. My legs are about shoulder width apart. And as I'm curling up each one of these weights, I am squeezing the bicep muscle and then slowly lowering. And again, I wanted to show this in real time so that you know how slow I'm moving and yet it is a continual motion. So I'm doing, I did 10 reps of that alternating twist. Now I am doing 10 reps of, I just call this a side bicep curl. So once I started doing this particular exercise, again, a slight change from my previous routine, I felt like this helped cur carve out the outside of my shoulder there. You can kind of see that muscle working there. It shows better, I think, on a short sleeve shirt because sometimes if you don't work all areas and all aspects of your bicep muscle, you don't get the toning or the toned look that you want. So since I have started doing this straight bicep curl here, I feel like that helped kind of further define that part of my bicep. So again, slow and controlled, alternating, and now I'm going to do these half extended bicep curls half lateral curls, I think is what they're called. And you can see I'm stopping at my waist and then going back up. And by concentrating, by this concentrated movement, it's again, keeping full tension on your bicep fully. If you go all the way down and back up, that just works it differently. So then I move the dumbbells to the center and these are called top half bicep curls. So again, only going halfway down and pulling up or pushing up. And by the end of this first set of basically 40 reps, your biceps are going to be screaming and your heart rate is going to be quite elevated. Again, you want to only rest for 20 seconds. I like to take my fingers back and help stretch out my biceps and the full part of my forearm even. This helps between sets to just kind of help prepare you and keep you loose. So now set number two, I am again going to do all four of those exercises. And even though 10 pounds does not seem like a lot of weight, trust me, by the time you get done with 40 reps and these four different exercises, you're gonna be dying. So again, be careful not to speed up the timing of these. Also be careful, you can tell I'm trying not to swing my upper body. I'm trying to just use my biceps to pull up that weight. And that is what is really going to help you build muscle just where it should be. And this is in the bicep area. So really concentrating on squeezing that bicep as I raise up that dumbbell. And if you have never done bicep curls slowly like this, you will be surprised at how hard it is to finish those sets 
because every aspect of the bicep is working even down into the crevice of your elbow. That will be sore the next day, especially if biceps is your focus group. Oh my goodness, I'll just warn you right now, those biceps are gonna be sore, but it's a good kind of sore. So now I'm on to that second kind of full bicep curl, but just keeping the dumbbell straight. And you can see from this angle how it works, just that lower part of the shoulder into the bicep. And that is what I feel like that definition comes from this particular movement. Now, as I move into, again, the top half lateral curls and the top half bicep curls, this was a game-changing exercise for me as well a number of years ago when I started doing this. And I had seen a trainer talk about this on, I think it was The Biggest Loser or one of those shows. And they were showing that the difference when you do a real muscle concentrated exercise like this, it really helps with the toning of the muscle. Yes, you're building actual strength, but this is one of those moves that really helps tone the bicep by just keeping those small little minuscule movements or half movements it really keeps the focus there and you're able to squeeze that bicep and get an even better result so last rest for our biceps and now because biceps are not the focus group of today I am now just finishing with those final two exercises. So I finish with 10 reps of each of the half bicep and lateral bilateral curls. If biceps are the concentrated muscle group for the week, I will do one additional set of either the bicep curls with the alternating twist or just the standing curls. So on the weeks like this one where the biceps are not the focus, Trust me, I am still plenty tired by the time I finish this last set of 20 here. One important thing to do all through your exercises, but especially when you start getting really tired, make sure you continue breathing. You want to push air out as you're lifting the weight and then breathe in as you're lowering the weight and then definitely drink lots of water. So after that one, we're on to the last muscle group, which are shoulders. So this first exercise I call an upright row. I am still using the two 10 pound dumbbell weights and I do a combination of two different exercises, 10 reps each. So I'm starting here with the upright row. You can see that I am not raising my elbows above the shoulder. I'll talk about that in a moment. And now this exercise is something I just made up, but I call it a box shoulder rotation. And you can see I'm twisting the dumbbells out and lifting the shoulder out and back in. And again, I'm being careful to keep those elbows below the shoulder. And by doing that, that helps keep the neck from being strained. It also prevents additional shoulder injury. If you do these upright rows and you raise your elbows too high, that can cause shoulder injury. And if you have bad shoulders, you may not be able to do this exercise at all. For me, when I do this exercise the right way and I keep it slow and controlled, it actually helps my muscles in my shoulders maintain a little bit of stability and it actually helps my shoulders feel better. My shoulders had years and years of exercise and wear and tear from playing volleyball, so I have to really be careful with my shoulders, but again, as long as I continue this exercise and do it correctly without using too heavy of weights, it actually is beneficial to my shoulders. So final set of these two exercises, which equals 20 reps. So again, I do three sets of 20 reps with these two different exercises. And by the time I am done here today, I'm definitely worn out. You can see I am really trying to breathe and yet keep these exercises slow and controlled 
all the way through until the end. <laughs> and then when I'm done, I do drink a ton of water, do some additional stretching as needed. And within 24 hours, I will be sore, but it will be a good sore. Now, as I promised at the beginning of the video, I just wanna briefly explain what I do the rest of the week. So I do not lift weights with my legs. I don't do lunges. I don't do squats. The only thing I do to keep the rest of my body toned and in shape is I do cardio. And sometimes, maybe two to three times a month, I'll do some yoga. But mostly I am doing cardio and my cardio is not crazy. So don't be scared off by that word. My cardio, my idea of cardio is 25 to 30 minutes of a good power walk outside or time on the elliptical machine. So my cardio, I usually do Monday, Thursday, Saturday. And then if I have time on Wednesday or a Sunday, I might work in an extra time of walking. So I hope that this video doesn't discourage you, but instead encourages you that you don't have to go crazy and be at the gym seven days a week and do these really hard strenuous workouts to make a difference in how your body looks and feels. As I mentioned, going through my workout routine, I think what is important is to continue to change it up slightly every week. Even on my walks, I change the direction that I go. I don't go the same hill every time. So even changing up your cardio routine is really important. And I think that keeps the body guessing of what you're trying to do and helps you continue to burn fat and build muscle. I hope that this video is helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure you give this video a thumbs up on your way out and I'll see you next time. Bye.